buying back your time. It's my favorite topic in the world. How does a person do that? You know, like in network marketing, yep. there are people who, you know, stay at home moms, mm -hmm. uh, work from home, have another job, doing this on the side, yeah, um, or they're, or they're full time and they're being pulled in a lot of directions. Yeah. Their team's pulling them in a lot of directions. They create some dysfunction inside of their team where they're doing everything for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, if, if somebody's feeling a little overwhelmed totally. on their time, how do they start this process? And, and the truth is it's super normal because most people unfortunately don't value their time because they don't have a tool to, to understand it. Welcome to the Excellence Project. My name is Eric Worre and today you're gonna hear from Dan Martell who is a very successful entrepreneur very successful coach on how to grow and scale your business. If you're interested in growth, you're interested in scale, you're gonna love this conversation. Let's jump into my conversation with Dan Martell. Dan Martell, how are you? Eric, I'm doing amazing. It's an honor. I'm it's, super pumped to be here. It's my honor. I, the, Dan Martell, I'm looking right here, is the Wall Street Journal best-selling author of Buy Back Your Time. Get unstuck, reclaim your freedom, and build your empire. If I could think of a title that would work for entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, uh, network marketers in general, that's a that's a title that will work. I wrote it for them, man. And you know what's crazy is most people have a hard time with the word empire, but mm. my definition is a life of unlimited creation you never have to retire from. And checking out your empire, I think you get that. I do. I mean, there's. There, I think there's reasons for... Huh... The way I went at it, I wouldn't recommend <laughs> because my risk tolerance is so enormously high mm. that I think it- uh, It's not for the faint of heart. No. no. Some people would cringe yeah. in some of those big decisions. Yeah, um, I've come up with coping mechanisms uh, in my life to- Buy back my time. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in yours. I'll share I've some seen, of mine. I've seen it around, yeah. Yeah, a few of mine that I use to buy back my time. Um, and and some of my coping mechanisms, because I'm rebellious by nature, mm -hmm. anything that I'm supposed to do, I yep. don't want to do, um, including speed limits, uh, what I should eat, how often I should work out, everything. I rebel against anything that's structured authority for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So I have to come up with di these different coping mechanisms in order to be able to do that. Uh, I, I could share, share mine, but mine are weird. Yours are probably a little bit more, uh, usable for the average person. Maybe. Um, it's funny because I, I'm, I have a draft of a book called how to get unstuck mm. and halfway through the book, I got stuck. <laughs> the irony. <laughs> Swear to God. I've, so I've stuck halfway through this book. Um, so I cannot, I cannot wait to have this discussion with you and talk to you about, about this whole issue. Um, <clears throat> you come from a kind of a software background. Yes. Yeah. I mean, my story's kind of crazy. I, um, I grew up in a pretty dysfunctional home. I think a lot of entrepreneurs can relate to that. It's so common. It's crazy. I talk about it in the book, the whole chaos factor, especially it essentially sets us up to be entrepreneurs because entrepreneurship is about being okay with uncertainty. Hmm. And we just usually learn at a young age if we've had those dysfunctions, that chaos, that trauma, whatever. But yeah, I ended up in prison twice by the time I was 17. What? Yeah, juvenile detention the first time, adult prison the second time. And- um, do, you luck, mind, do you mind sharing what happened? No, I just, I got addicted to drugs when I was 13, ended up- That was like a coping mechanism? Or yeah, what? just like my, my mom. I got diagnosed with ADHD when I was 11, put on Ritalin, thought I was broken, you know, just didn't have any self-worth. And, you know, when I got introduced to drugs and, you know, I pretty young age, I what just was the drug of choice started off with weed, mescaline, PCP, um, acid. I mean, it was, you know, I, I used to tell people just like not feeling mm. the, the drug of choice was I just didn't want to feel anything to not feel. You got pills. What, what it was, whatever alcohol. And what happened was, is, um, what, what the final straw where my life really kind of took a different turn was I ended up, um, getting in a high speed chase. I, I had did some bad stuff. The police were looking for me. I stole a car. I figured I'm, I'm I grew this up in the 13? East coast, uh, seven, 16, 16. Okay. Yeah. Um, I grew up in the East coast of Canada and, uh, I was on my way to Montreal 
And on the drive there, I was drunk and high. I had a handgun. Where in the East Coast? New Brunswick. You know, New well, Brunswick. Where, yeah, whereabouts? Moncton. Moncton. Hub I, City. I have some very good friends in Moncton. Yeah. So yeah. I grew up in Moncton and uh, this happened in Sussex, New Brunswick. I took a wrong turn and, you know, there was a routine roadblock. And instead of stopping, I decided to gun the car and I had a gun in a handbag sitting next to me because I told myself if the police stopped me, I was going to let them do their job. And I ended up smashing the side of a house going way too fast and went for the gun. And for whatever reason, it got stuck. And the cops came up and opened the door and just grabbed me and threw me in the back of the cop car. And I woke up the next morning sober, wondering what my life was going to look like. Hmm. So I ended up doing six months in an adult prison due to the severity of the crimes. Released to a place called Portage, which was a rehab center that literally taught me the power of mentorship. All the staff there were ex-drug addicts. First time in my life, I met people that actually understood what I'd been through or gone through or what I was going through. And, and you know, most people that went to this program did three or four months. And, you know, I had some real, real demons to work through. And um, that's where I rebuilt my relationship with my parents. I, I learned about my feelings and how to respond to things and just honestly rebuild my self-worth. And it was at the end of that program, I was helping Rick, the maintenance guy, because he was building an old church camp clean out one of the cabins and there was um an old 486 computer you, you know you, some people these young sure, kids yeah. they don't know so but there's this old computer sitting there and next to it this yellow book on java programming and i'd never touched a computer prior to that and i just opened it up and i thought it was going to read like you know ones and zeros or hieroglyphics or whatever i don't know computer programming like and it just read like english really yeah javascript and java is just like if this then that and i just literally started the computer up and just typed what chapter one said. And within 20 minutes, I got the computer to print out hello world. And I thought I was, maybe I'm a computer. I literally thought I was a Doogie Hauser of programming. When was this? Uh, this would have been 97. Got it. So, um, right before the big, this little know, thing called the boom. internet. Yeah. And I got out and what was cool is, is that became my new addiction. I went all in. I remember my dad, we had to move parts of the city just to get to a new school, new group of friends, obviously. And, um, you know, I, I was passionate about two things, botany, if you can imagine why <laughs> and computer programming. He's always like, you could have a garden as a hobby. I think you should lean into this, this computer thing. And he made a deal with me. He said, you know, I'll buy you whatever books you need as long as you finish it. So I would just one at a time, I think over a three year period, I bought like 200 books and just taught myself the internet, how to code, software design, database design, all that stuff. And that that's literally saved my life. It hmm. became the thing that I went all in on and has now led to building and exiting five companies, investing in 60 plus for the billion dollar companies, running the largest software CEO group in the world called SAS Academy, hundred million dollar fund. CEOs. Yeah, so SAS Academy is a coaching and mentoring group for software CEOs. Okay. predominantly bootstrap so think of all the apps that small businesses solopreneurs pay for every month yep the builders of those apps are clients of mine uh yeah i like mo like all the real estate folks so do you all coach them more or do you build more now no we 100 percent that well that one that company's a coaching organization but i have you know coaches and partners that run that and then i have a hundred million dollar private equity fund most people call it private equity fund but it's our own capital so we buy and hold software companies. So we were using buying companies that have about, you know, two to 5 million in EBITDA. We've got a holding group and then we're going to eventually bring it public. You help scale them. Yeah. We buy them and do what I taught people how to do, what I used to do. We built a whole team around it kind of operationally. And, and then, yeah, we're going to bring it public. Same thing as like what Hormozy does in his. On the acquisition, acquisition side. Thing. Yeah. I but, mean, but yours is specifically software. Only software. Yeah. B2B SaaS, B2B software <laughs> as a service. Hmm. Yeah. And then my jams helping businesses, you know, build companies they don't grow to hate. And I've always been teaching this framework. Say that called, again. I, my passion in life, this is the movement I'm, I'm pushing, is how do you build a company you don't grow to hate? Eric, you've probably seen it. Sure, a million times. Yeah, people that- And get, even in network marketing, building a team you, you don't grow to hate. Totally. Uh, or, or the network marketing company owners building a company that they don't grow to hate or resent. That's it. You know, it, maybe not, maybe hate's too strong a word, but resent yeah. is, is Get frustrated. Maybe a bit the more biggest, common. Yeah. The biggest or feel trapped by or owned by or obligated to. Or not fulfilled by because you're not or productive bored anymore. Or bored with. Bored. 
Yeah, I think the biggest risk to businesses is the CEO deciding, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. Just, I, it's not what I signed up for. And I think- and they can't figure out succession. They can't. Or and they can't, or the law of the lid. They, they, they hit John the lid Maxwell, and they, yeah. they can't bring somebody else in yeah. in order to be able to further the vision that, that, can, that can take Nailed it farther it. than they do because their ego. Yeah, yeah, I call it the pain line. I think entrepreneurs will not grow into pain. And when they hit that line, they either sell, sabotage, or decide to- stall and i want to help them stall is kind of sabotage stall, yeah? yeah well stall is i made more profit last year and i worked half as much i'm gonna stop i'm good but the problem is with being good is your team's not good it's kind of like sabotage it is yeah and the world is expanding i call it a success coma mm. you go into a success coma yeah. you don't even know you went there uh most of the times yeah. i've been in success comas probably i don't yeah. know five times in my life uh you hit this certain thing and like Good. Everything's good. Smoking Don't want to mess cigars, it up. Driving around, hanging yeah. out. I'm enjoying the fruits everything of my I'm labor. Everything I'm touching. You know, this is what I did it for. You know, so you kind of stop doing what got you where you were. Yeah. And you get... You don't realize it, but you're restless mm -hmm. and you don't know why you throw it into golf or you throw it into some hobby or, you know, you're going to travel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's travel. Yeah. It's not that thing. You know, what I, what I found was the answer to that was... was two phases in, in the growth of an entrepreneur. One is the self phase, which is nothing to be embarrassed about. Mm -hmm. I want to do better for myself. Yeah, I want to it's take in, care yeah. of myself. I want to be independent. I want to make my own choices. I don't want somebody else telling me what to do. Yeah, You know what I mean? I want to be able to take care of my family, right? All, all that kind of stuff. And then when that gets taken care of, it's a very dangerous time for most people mm -hmm. because they don't know what to do. Yeah. So either they feel guilty that they're and start sabotaging yep, from that place. Yeah. Or, or they don't feel like that they're imposter they, syndrome. They don't deserve it. Or self-worth yeah. issues or whatever. Or they find the second gear. And the second gear is instead of self is contribution. And that's unlimited. It It's super fuel. Yeah. Like the, the, you know, people start businesses for inspiration and desperation in network marketing. A lot of times it's desperation. Yeah. You know? Um, and I think that's good fuel. But it's a fuel. So I call it dark energy versus light energy. Yeah, it's yeah. powerful though. Yeah, that's I mean, like a diesel fuel. If it's I have torque. to, yeah. If I have to find five hundred dollars, they're going to turn my phone off by tomorrow. You find it. I'm going to find five hundred bucks. You know, um, but then you're going to find the next five hundred when you don't need. Mm. You know, so the there's reasons built in when it's desperation. Yeah. When it's not desperation, there's not reasons built in. So when you find that contribution vein, yeah, you say, you know it what, pulls you forward. Oh my gosh, the amount of fuel in that, it's like, you know, rocket fuel. Yeah. As far as your inspiration and motivation. So if you find yourself focused on just on yourself, start to to take your efforts, push it towards somebody That's else. So so good. You know, but I'm interested in how do you do that? Because I see some people do that into contribution. Yeah. And they wear themselves to death. Mm -hmm. And they don't have a life. Yeah. You know, what I have in the top of all of my legal, if I had my legal pad right here, I would show you. On the very top of my legal pad, it says lifestyle friendly. Mm. Always. Yeah. Well, how, how can I build, cont contribute as much as I can yeah. to the world and my family and everything else mm -hmm. and still have it lifestyle friendly? Yeah. You know, so I'm not killing myself. Yeah. My buddy yeah. Brad says life, life design before business design. Yeah. 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 Life plan before business plan. Now, when you're in desperation, you can't, you're not really thinking no. that. You're thinking, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to get this business successful? How am I going to pay my employees? How am I going to finish this software? How am I going to get this thing yeah. launched? How's it going to scale? I don't have enough this. I don't have enough that, right? There's All these nothing things. to think about giving back yet. Right. Yeah. No, not that. No. But but there are there are two veins, two, yeah. two sources of fuel, I think. Yeah. Right. Um, some comparison fuel too. That's like in the middle. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not, some, it doesn't clean as, it doesn't burn as clean, but no, it's but powerful. It, you know, yeah. I, I, and what I tell people about comparison um, is, is use it if it's helpful mm. and reject it if it's painful. That's a good way to frame it. You know, because see, people say comparison's the thief of joy. I don't think no, that's it's true. Not. If you find somebody that's comparable enough, yeah. it'll get you to go, well, what the heck? What's, why am I not doing that? Yeah. I'm going to go now. Yeah. But if I try to compare myself to Elon Musk, he, here's not what I'm going to start. And this is what I found on that era. Cause you, sometimes you post stuff like you obviously a beautiful life. And mm -hmm. when you share it, some people either inspired or irritated. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what I've, I've come to conclusion. People that are irritated is because they're not on path. 
Yeah. People that are inspired is because like they use it for, they're like, that's awesome. Like, right. cause they, they're on path to someday maybe get that or at least showing up in a way that could maybe possibly, or at least they understand it. Right. I, th I find that's an interesting way. If you're, if you're triggered by somebody else's success in a negative way, then just compare against you. Yeah. Just Working, compare against, fight against you. you from yesterday. If, 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 if it's painful, too painful. So it actually causes you to move farther away from your goal. Mm -hmm. Don't even, don't even go there. Like some people won't, if you're not in shape, you're not going to start a marathon. No. If you don't think you can finish. Do that first 5k. But I'll, 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 I'll pay you a thousand dollars to run to the mailbox. Yeah. Let's start there. Yeah. Oh, I'll do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just compare you to you, compare you to you, compare you to you. But I would, there's no way I wouldn't have done what I've done in my life, which is still, I feel like the kitty games compared to people like you and other people that have been very, very successful is I use their stories to, to say, come on, Eric, get your ass up. You can do better than this. You're not thinking big enough. You're not thinking big enough. You're not mm. thinking big enough. I go, if, any, if anything share to a younger version of myself is think bigger, faster. Because there's so much. Think bigger, faster. Yeah. Yeah. Get that life you dream of sooner so you can enjoy it. No, 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 no. Get the, get the life in your head. Oh, got it. Think about, yeah, believe it there. Way bigger. Yeah. Way earlier. Give yourself permission to, to think outrageous things that other people would laugh at. Yeah. And then let that pull you. Mm. Even, even in the face of ridicule, it doesn't even yeah. matter. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Or even any external logic in the thinking. Yeah. No proof. Right. But it's no yeah, proof. But hold the belief. Yeah. Your imagination is the most powerful force on earth. Yeah. Most people use it to think about what could go wrong, mm. you know, instead of let's what's think possible. about what could, what's possible. So anyway, buying back your time. My favorite topic in the world. How does a person do that? You know, like in network marketing, yep. there are people who, you know, stay at home moms. Mm -hmm. Uh, work from home, have another job, doing this on the side, yeah, um, or they're additive. or they're full time and they're being pulled in a lot of directions. Yeah. Their teams pulling them in a lot of directions. They create some dysfunction inside of their team where they're doing everything for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, if if somebody's feeling a little overwhelmed, totally on their time, how do they start this process? And and the truth is, it's super normal because most people unfortunately don't value their time because they don't have a tool to to understand it, right? Mm -hmm. The first thing is, and I talk about, I think in chapter three, I, I call it the five time assassins. Most people, the biggest assassin on their time, it's self-inflicted, right? It's it's their vices that is pulling away from them. It's their 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 micromanagement. Their um, you know, or the opposite, where it's like they don't they don't manage anything, and then things explode, and then they wonder why it just this pattern keeps going over and over. And so, like the first way to buy back your time without spending a penny is just by looking at yourself and saying, where am I being wasteful? Where am I being an avoider, right? Some people, when they feel that pressure what are the and biggest noise, avoiders? Oh, I mean, it's, the thing is, is the things they're avoiding is people decisions. It's um, investment decisions in their business. You know this, I mean, starting a network marketing company, like it does take, it takes courage, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. everybody, mm -hmm. you hear all the negative stuff and they're gonna judge you and, and you gotta say, no, I'm not gonna listen to that. I'm gonna go and do it. But some people, they'll they'll wait, they'll sit on their hands, they'll drag their feet to make that decision to get on the journey. Um, and instead, or or if they're they're like, I know I need to invest in this program or I need a, I need a mentor, and they just decide not to do it. And instead they'll go and they'll, they'll, they'll watch tv shows to numb themselves right so like there's all this time wasting of just being in an avoider my, my whole thing is you can for most people if we actually looked at your calendar and we analyze it through a time and energy audit that's what i call it right the buyback loop in the book is a very clear three-step program first i want to look at where are you spending your time how do you feel about those activities does it give you energy or take your energy and then if you had to invest in buying it back Where's the least investment, the least expensive way to spend money? Most people don't realize they're doing $5 tasks, $10 tasks. And here's the truth. It, even if your aspiration isn't a million dollar company, here's what I know. Million dollar companies were not built off $10 tasks. Hmm. And that's, it's impossible to work enough to build something meaningful. You have to learn to get leverage. It yes. could be a part-time home cleaner. It could be a part-time uh, bookkeeper, whatever it is especially if it's taking your energy. Cause Eric, the person that I, I'm, I'm going to assume this is how you live your life. You go from thing to thing to thing that gives you energy. 
and people look at you and go, how do you do so much? Well, it's, I don't do the stuff that takes my energy. So there's no, there's no depletion. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Some people don't realize that's an abnormal thing, or you can get to that where you just ask yourself in your business, what do you love to do? Are you, do you love recruiting? Do you love training your people? Do you love, you know, educating yourself? What is it that you love to do that gives you energy? And if you could do that more and less of the other stuff, those are unlocks. That's, that's like a compounding energetic output. Yeah. And the energy thing is interesting to me because <clears throat> I, there's, there's one big lie. There's, there's one word that you said in there that I just want to discuss. Mm. Okay. The word love. Cause I think one of the biggest lies in entrepreneurial world, um, and everybody talks about it and I just don't understand why they do is only do what you love. Mm. That is the biggest bunch of bullshit ever. Does an Olympic athlete only do what they love? No, you don't go to the gym. Nobody enjoys going I mean, to the gym. Take anybody that did anything in an excellent level. Do they only do what they love? Mm. So what it's created is people like, well, I don't love this right now, so I'm just not going to do it. Um, I, I frame it differently. What is your highest and best use? What is your highest return task that you can do inside of your business that will pay the most per hour? Get so good at that that you love it. Yes, jump on your strengths. Get so good at that and manage around the rest, right? Yeah. So for me, <clears throat> I had this, my first mentor, billionaire mentor. I had, I had other mentors. But the first billionaire, a guy by the name of Paul Meyer, he had this big educational uh, business around the world. Um, ran 40 companies. He ta taught me, you know, gave me a whole bunch of lessons. But of course, at the time I, I said, he, he said, I said, Would you, can you help me, you know, learn what you do and how you do this? Because he seemed like he had time. I mean, talk about buy your time back. He ran 40 companies. He said, I, I, you seem like he had all the time in the world. I was, I was, when I was in the room, it seemed like I was the most important person in the world. Yeah, I'm this young present. kid. Yeah. Totally present. And I said, so he said, so tell me what you want. Let's just talk money. What do you want? And I said, well, I, you know, I'd always wanted to make a million dollars a year. He said, well, that works out roughly to about $500 an hour. Is there a $500 an hour task that you can do in your network marketing business? Um, a task that will pay you $500 an hour. Maybe not in, the, in that hour, but ultimately. Yeah. It'll end up paying that. And I said, yes. And the answer was, if I was in front of a prospect, if I was yeah. talking with a prospect, a team member, customer, whatever, it didn't matter. Over time, my time spent in front of a prospect was worth at least $500 an hour. Mm -hmm. He said, all right. From now on, everything that you're doing right now that pays less than $500 an hour, you need to have somebody else do. Mm -hmm. I said, well, explain that to me. He said, well, do you mow your lawn? I said, yeah. How long does it take? Uh, and two hours. Thousand dollar opportunity. Yeah. How much can you pay somebody to do that? The time is like 40 bucks. He said, Well, you're not saving 40 by doing it. You're losing 960. Every time you mow the lawn, you're losing $960. And I went, Oh. I said, I said, You're serious. This is everything. He said, Yeah, everything. It's an opportunity cost. In that moment, I stopped being handy. At that moment, I stopped doing every single thing under $500 an hour at the time. Now that number's much higher. Yeah. Um, but under $500 an hour, I just refuse to do it. I, 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 don't, I don't put gas in my car. No. I don't change the oil. I don't get the car washed. You're, you're, you're uh, other preaching. than yeah. family things. Yeah. I know? say two things. Spend time with people I enjoy and love mm -hmm. or create stuff that only I can create. Or, or hobbies that give me joy. Totally. Yeah. yeah things like that. Um, outside of that, when it comes to, when it comes to my business life, I'm not doing it. Yeah. Um, and it, it came so quickly. Now, as he said, the other side of this is you can't just sit on the couch while somebody else is mowing the no, lawn. No, you got to fill. That's the third step to my, my you got to fill it with, with Things that, that high return you task. Money. Yeah. And you don't have to love it all the time. No, nope. I I'm an introverted person. I did not love being in front of prospects. I did not love the the whole act of recruiting. I loved <clears throat> the act of having a team. Yeah. And working with them. So I was willing to do 
<clears throat> what an Olympic athlete would do is training and ice baths and perfect practice four in, the, four yeah. in the morning in order to be able to get to the stuff that I did like, mm. which was the camaraderie and building together and helping yeah. seeing people improve and see people light up and, and people going to the next stage in their life and, and saying, thank you three years down the road. And yeah. all those, I, <clears throat> I love the end result, yeah. but I didn't always love the process, yeah. you know? So that was one of the big hacks for me. I just want to jump in and quickly interrupt this podcast interview and give those of you involved in network marketing a very special message. And that message is this. If you want to grow your business, I can help. If you're just getting started, you don't have any recruits yet, you don't have much of a team, I can help you get to your first 10 recruits. If you got some recruiting going on, but you need more help with duplication, I can help you on your journey from part-time to full-time. And if you're a serious player, I can help you scale and grow your business. All you have to do is go to goproacademy.com, goproacademy.com. Wherever you are in your journey of network marketing, this program will help you get where you wanna go much, much faster. I've helped millions of people learn how to recruit. I've helped tens of thousands of people get to six figure a year income. And I've helped over 500 people get to a seven figure annual income inside of this network marketing profession. I can help you too. Go to goproacademy.com, goproacademy.com. Yeah. I'll give you one of my other hacks that helped me become more productive. Then I wanna hear all of yours. Yeah. Because I'm resistant to structured authority, I'm also resistant to routine. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to cope, I treat everything like a project. With a deadline. Something that has a beginning, middle, and an end. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Today was a project. Yeah. Three podcasts today. Yeah. I had what I was going to do this morning. Da, 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 da. <clears throat> I'm going to have these three. Then I have what I'm going to do this afternoon. Yeah. Today is a project. Yeah. Okay. I was excited about it, looking forward to it, totally focused, not distracted by anything yeah. else, going to complete that task. Yeah. You know, I, I have projects that are a, a week long. I have projects that are, you know, it, it, on my document I was telling you about before we started. Yeah. You know, it's my four, 14 page yeah. dump of all my projects. Yeah. There is <clears throat> uh, quick and fast, mm -hmm. which, you know, give me some sense of satisfaction. Yeah. There is urgent, there is midterm, and there is long term. Long term, yeah. You know, so, and, and they're all mapped out in as much detail as I can, because when I get them on paper, then my mind relaxes. I can pick what I'm going to focus on for the day. Mm -hmm. That's one of my little hacks. So now give me all your hacks. I mean, the, the hacks for me is, is you, you framed it so perfectly. If you understand where you're going to get the most leverage, and, and I love your idea when people say, well, I don't love to do that. You have to earn your ability. Like, you know what I mean? People are like, well, I can't afford that. It's like, yeah, yeah I know. Well, yeah. what do I do? build the skill set to to create the value that the market rewards like like just because i say you got to buy back your time if you can't afford it, it means you're not charging enough you haven't become valuable enough you're not willing to sacrifice like it, it it's not like you get to decide i just want to do the things i enjoy but what i've discovered is most people at a certain point if you just get rid of the five time assassins then it's about how do you show up like what are you the said time assassins of uh, there's five of them. There's the saver. Some people are the penny pincher, mm. right? They step over dollars to pick up dimes. You know, they're, they're not I going to do it myself. I had, I had a friend of mine. Okay. He ran a $2 million a year mastermind and he was struggling with it. And he calls me and goes, Dan, I heard you built like this multi eight figure coaching thing. How did you do it? And I said, well, here's how we do it. And we have this process methodology. We help people achieve the perfect exit. And we created this model. And he goes, who helped you create the model? I said, my buddy, Simon. Is that what he does? Yeah, that's, that's what he does. He goes, does he have a book? And I said, I don't think he has a book, but he's helped this person, this person, this for all people he know. Well, how much is he? I don't know. I can't remember, but dude, he'll give you the answer to solve your problem because he was about to shut down the 2 million a year business. So even high performer guys that are, doing over a million a year, still have the saver mentality, mm. right? Um, the other one is the uh, self-medicator, right? The person that can't, some people, when they lose, they self-medicate. When they win, they self-medicate. They can't actually feel, and they don't see how much pain it's creating in their lives, either by wasting days, saying the wrong thing to the wrong person. What do you mean by self-medicate? They self-medicate the, the, the success. They're sabotaging their time by having vices, overeating, overdrinking. Food, I drink, used to be that guy. I used, I used to be an alcoholic. I, I mean, I wouldn't call myself an alcoholic, but I would drink all the time. Of some sort. 
Totally. I mean, to the point where, you know, we got a big deal and I went and celebrated and then I was too drunk to make the meeting the next day and told them I had food poisoning. It was full of crap and threw this restaurant like under the bus. Like, dude, it was embarrassing. So I've been sober 11 years. I decided, yeah, when my wife, she told me she was pregnant. I was like, I don't want to bring this into our lives anymore. So, so I, I'd, I'd encourage people to read the book to get the rest of them, yep, but the, sure. the growth hacks or the hacks to get your time back. It, the, the sabotage, I, I just want to go through the five of them real quick and we're going to put the links to the book. Yeah. Where can they get it all? Uh, buybackyourtime.com, but it is on Amazon. Do you have any other stores. special stuff on your website or whatever, or just at wherever? Uh, buy back Where, your time. I'll tell you what people, because one of the big one is administrative support and people are always asking me because they, they work with me and they see how my executive assistant works. If somebody wants my playbook and they find me on Instagram, because that's like my favorite channel mm -hmm. and they're following me and they message me EA, I will send them the, my internal Google doc and I'll share it with you, obviously, or yep. if you're interested. But um, that's that's the best. If they just want something extra, go get the book. Come find me on Instagram, Dan Martell, Tales of Martell, and message me EA, and I will send you no opt-in, no nothing, just Google Doc with my internal playbook. It's a gift. All right, and and we're gonna put the link to the book. We're gonna put the link to my Instagram, to your Instagram, and those instructions. Link to your uh, your your SAS coaching. Com. Yeah. SASAcademy.com. SASAcademy.com yeah. uh, for, for those who are running big SAS, uh, Software. SAS, SAS companies. Yeah. Uh, link to your... Uh, Personal, Dan Martell. Dan Martell. Martell. Yeah. And link to your uh, your venture, whatever, venture yeah. fund. Yeah, yeah. Big, uh, big Band Software. <clears throat> What's it called? Big Band Software. Big Band yeah. Software. All right, we'll, we'll put all the links to all that stuff. Yeah, if if any it. of these different things uh, appeal to anybody, um, they'll be able to grab it. So yeah. I, I just want to go through the five. We don't need to go deep, but uh, one was... It's right here. Saver. I just got to remember the, the penny pincher. One. Uh, yeah. The penny pincher, the, the medicator. Yeah. Self medicator Where are the five, the supervisor. Yeah. The staller, the person that drags their feet to make a decision. Mm, they get, get stuck in their head. Dude, it's gotta be perfect. Perfection is nothing more than procrastination in disguise. We all know this, the speed demon, right? They move too quick. I, I don't know if you resonate with this. Like, I feel like we're cut from the same. I, that's me. So because I'm moving too quick, I have to fix problems clearly. yeah because i you know how I mean? do you find the balance between stalling and, and moving too quick a little strategy hmm. i can make quick decisions if i understand the strategy first once i have a little bit of vision then the decisions can be quick making quick decisions based on reactive problems that's where i create time problems the third one is what the third one is the supervisor mm -hmm. this is the micromanager this is the person that Hire somebody to buy back their time, and then it takes twice as much work because they. It's the person don't who trust cleans them. their cleans their house before, before the, house the cleaning lady comes. comes up. Eric, you're speaking my language. Man. This is so good, <laughs> right? We talked about the saver. I've got to clean because I don't want to be embarrassed. What, it what totally is. Or it's like I, I before I hire a coach, I need to make sure my business is in order. It's like that's what they're there to do. Yeah, is to help you get things in order, and then so, the saver, and then the self medicator. Those are the five, and and start there because just get rid of that noise from your calendar so you have the space to like you said fill it with things skills development beliefs your mindset uh, i call it character traits those are like the three big pillars if i can focus on the skill sets gonna make me more money the belief sets around the way i look at the world money mindset i, I see some books around here mm -hmm, that i'm big mm -hmm. fans of and then the character traits of being confident consistent creative all these things like that's that's how we actually progress without spending a penny you're going to get that now, once we start hiring people, people always go, well, what's the order? If I was starting, Dan, you, okay, I'm, I'm on board. I wanna hire my first person, who should I hire? Mm -hmm. I get this question all the time. For me, it's somebody to help with the administrative tasks in your business. Mm -hmm. Like you should, like you, you literally framed it perfect where you said, I just wanna talk to a prospect or somebody on my team. I wanna develop people or bring people to my organization. Anything that doesn't look like that, I shouldn't be doing it. Yep. And in my world, I call it inbox and calendar. And your inbox is nothing more than a public to-do list for strangers on the internet. So if I had an office on Main Street USA, I wouldn't let random people just walk into my office and say, hey, Dan, you got a second? Hey, Dan, you got a second? Yeah, that's what your inbox represents. I had the privilege of spending a week with Richard Branson in Switzerland. Yeah. And I, because he's the billionaire, all the billionaires want to be like. And I watched how he operated. And he has Helen, his assistant, who's been with him for 13 years. And she all inbound goes through Helen. And at breakfast, they sit down every morning and she only brings to him the things that she doesn't know how to route. And he says, that sounds good. That's amazing. Do this, tell Bob, blah, blah, blah. And then we go skiing. 
Yep. I'm like, okay, I'm I'm not using my assistant the right way. That that's the setup, right? And then the calendar. Like, I want to be here with you. I want to do this. I don't want to think about where I got to be next. I don't I don't know, right? I just want I know that I've got a structure that I like that's got the date nights in there and the workouts and all that stuff, my creative time, and then I allow my assistant to co-create with me so that every week, every day it's 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 got a, a little bit of everything, but it's dynamic, right? So to me, that's the first level. So that's like, if I had to hire my first person, I was starting mm -hmm. a company tomorrow, I'd hire somebody to help with the administrative stuff. And that person oftentimes can be a PA too, a personal assistant or in your home. Assistant. Yeah, virtual assistant, you can you can spend four or $5 an hour. So people mm -hmm. are like, I can't afford it. You can go. If you replace the, what they're doing with the higher value high productive tasks. tasks that yes. you're normally scared to do. Totally. Or you're trying to avoid. Lean into it. Uh, what I would tell people in my world, right, is, they're mostly solopreneurs. They mostly don't have employees. Some of them need them. Okay. Um, but most of, mostly the, the thief of, of growth for a solopreneur mm -hmm. is two things. One is, uh, our, our brain can, is going to serve as primary. One thing is secondary. Another thing. Mm -hmm. So if they have a job, and they have their side hustle. Yeah. If their job is primary, mm -hmm. it's going to take all their subconscious brain yeah. and they're never going to have time for their secondary. Mm -hmm. So even if they're part time, they have to have their side hustle. Yeah. Their network marketing, whatever it is they're, they're, they're doing as a side hustle, be their primary and their job be the secondary. Side hustle. And now the subconscious will start to serve that. It's that it's that frame. Right? Yeah, it's changing that. No, that's my primary vehicle. Right. I just have a side I do hustle, this which to is make this nine possible. To yeah. That's I'm a comedian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to think about this. jokes all the time. Yeah. All my friends are going to be comedians. Oh, every, everything I'm going to be thinking about, I'm going to always be looking for jokes. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm serving this yeah. Yeah. while I'm, while I'm building. This, that's a beautiful, thing. right? Yeah. So, cause, cause your subconscious will actually sabotage whatever second. Yeah. It says what's priority right now. It'll close. Wrong order. Close your awareness. Yeah. Um, so that's the first step. Mm. Um, the second step is. The, the biggest thief is your to-do list. Your, all your little petty little shit that you got to do every day. Somebody's got to clean out the garage and down. somebody's got to do this and somebody's got to do the laundry. You know, somebody's got to put the dishes, this dishwasher, all that stuff. So all the things that are taking your time on your to-do list that pays less than $500 an hour, if you want to make a million. If that's bucks, your number, yeah. If that's your number, you need to find somebody else to do. Yeah as creatively as you possibly can. Totally. Interns is a good free source. I, I teach my clients to call colleges and get find some people, somebody who can, who can friends do and family, as, many, as yep. many things as possible. There's kids in your neighborhood. Yep. Uh, 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 Childcare, whatever. But instead of just oh, relaxing in that moment, that's when you need to step into your primary again and to be able to do that. So I would start with somebody else, get the, get the, do the laundry, somebody else, put gas in the car, yeah. somebody else, Clean go the get the groceries. Yeah. Somebody else, you know, maybe make some of the meals. Totally. You know what I mean? Somebody else mow the lawn. Yeah. Um, the, all that stuff that doesn't seem like it's anything and it's it part of your identity. Up. Yeah. You know, somebody, no, that's, I do that. I, I coach a lot of women. Hmm. And the truth is, is I, the amount of times I've had conversations with women that have a hard time with that because they're worried about what their, their identity, their moms would say. Yeah. Or, or worse, their husband's moms. Yep right? The mother-in-law, the judgment, yep. you know? And I'm just like, I get it. Yeah. But you need to put Mom you guilt's first. Real. Mom guilt is real. Mom guilt's real. But here's what's worse. Go through, you know, one of the books that growing up that I really didn't like, uh, children's books was the giving tree. You ever read the giving tree? It's this tree, a little kid. It's got this tree and it's, you know, it's this little friend. And it, it just it gives and gives and gives and gives and gives its whole life until it's a stump and then it's forgotten, kind of. Okay. Right. That's a bad paraphrase of of a classic children's <laughs> book. Yeah. But sometimes moms out there mm -hmm. can give and 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 they end up a stump, and they're not respected yeah. like they hoped they would be as a result of all they gave giving 
they think that at the end of it. Poor I'm dumb like, mom, you know, she never made anything. She never did anything. You know, she only did all the things. Everything. Right. Um, <clears throat> so what I try to encourage the women out there that, that are struggling with mom guilt is. Put themselves first. Well, have the conversation. Yeah. With the kids and with the spouse and say, let me tell you where mom wants to take her life. And this is what and I the need example, for me. Yeah. And, the, and the example that I want to provide for you. Okay. Yes, I'm going to give because I love you. But yes, I have a purpose. In addition to loving you, I have a purpose in contributing to the world. And I'm going to do this over here. I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to do it. And you guys got to start picking up some, yeah. some slack. So this is going to be a team effort. I love you know? that. So you got to have the conversation instead of just shocking them. Like, mom's gone. I'm out of here. I'm going to go build this other thing. You got to make, make your own breakfast or whatever, you know, out of the blue. Totally. You got to, you got uh, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. It can't, it can't be chaotic. But I want, I want to invite everybody to listen and to consider asking themselves, what's one thing mm. they're doing today that they know they got to stop doing? Mm. Everybody and, knows something. And go, go do that today. If, if that's the byproduct of our conversation, Eric. Or go think, stop doing that. Yeah. Like go do something to remove that out of your calendar. So have that conversation with your family. And, and honor, understanding why now it's important and, and give yourself permission. Again, it's the self-worth, hmm. right? A lot of people don't invest in themselves, give them that space because they're worried they won't do right with that newfound time. That's, that's the truth. Some people don't trust themselves. Yeah. But again, I think you have to have the why. You got to fight against the, I want, like whatever that dark energy is or the light energy is pulling you, like have that and go, and go do something. I just, I really would just love to encourage every person to just, just get three hours a week back, five hours a week. Just start with, it's like the gateway drug. I had a client yeah. once and he's like, I can't get my, my, my uh, wife on board. I go, just give her a $500 budget and say, just spend it. And cause now if you want to go to the gym, you want to do this and that $500 a month, was a gateway drug, right? The meal, the, I don't want to go pick up the groceries anymore, getting a house cleaner. And then all of a sudden somebody's, cause it is a thing. Like some people don't feel comfortable having other people in their home. Yeah. But once you start and while they were doing that, you went and had lunch with your friends you haven't seen in a while, or you went and prospected or whatever it is, that starts the snowball movement. Hand me your book again. So <clears throat> I'm a believer. This is one of uh, another of my beliefs. And I'm sure it's going to align with yours because it sounds like a lot of our stuff aligns. Uh, truth's old, isn't it? Um, mm. It just keeps cy cycling around. It's, it's true, a little not bit different. new, yeah. Um, but I believe that time machines are real. It's an actual real thing. Um, and you can't move into the future, but you can be in the present and be five years smarter mm. That's instead of being five years older. So like this book is how much does it cost? Well, uh, how much is it? 26 bucks. Book? $26. This book for $26 can make you how many years smarter and more efficient without being older? Mm. How many years would you oh, say? If I, somebody I'm, really implemented everything that's in this book. I'm going to go 26 years. 26 years. So <clears throat> would it be worth $26 to be 26 years smarter and more efficient? Answer is yes. Now it's not going to work if you don't do read it, it yeah. and you don't implement it. Right. So the biggest time machines in the world for me are books, mentors, masterminds. Yeah. Proximity. Those three things. Yeah. Um, now the thing that I found books were the best because nobody can stop me. Yeah. Like, Unlimited. I'm, I'm buying the book. Yeah. You say, no, you can't buy it. Well, screw I you. I'm it. buying it. I got it. It's, it's my book. I got yeah. it right now. Um, so books rock my world totally. Same. Um, they take you to a certain place because you do have to get into movement, right? You can't just, you can get stuck in personal development prison. Totally. Shelf help. Um, and yeah. Shelf help. Exactly. I read them all. I read them all. I haven't done anything, but I read them all. Can I share this air with you? Cause yeah, I yeah, think yeah. people will serve. Cause I had a, I had a team member once, Stephanie, and she was like the, you got to read this book. You got to listen to this podcast and quotes and all that stuff. And she was that, but she was also, and she would even run like training seminars at lunch and learns, but she was also the person that everybody had issues with. Yeah. And I realized self improvement doesn't happen without self-awareness mm. and you can read all the books you want in the world, but if you don't learn to read yourself, 
you're not going to make progress. Isn't that interesting? I think that's what you, you, the frame you just Uh, said. Yes. Awareness combination of awareness and learning from doing Mm. the feedback loop. Yeah. You can, you can study, you can read this. You can know this by heart. Intellectually. Yeah. But until you do it and you get the feedback loop and you can start improving on it, plan, do, review, plan, do, review, plan, do, review, plan, do, review Mm -hmm. to be able to refine it. It won't matter that much. You'll forget this. You read this book and you forget it. Like you've yeah, forgotten most of the other books. Yeah. What what I recommend when, when a book hits you is read it and then read it and then read it and then read it and read it. Because it, it, it doesn't help you when you remember it. It helps and you're you really a different can't person it. every read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I keep reading Thinking Grow Rich and Seven Habits right. and Good to Great. And it's like. <clears throat> so, the set, you know, one is books. It's, you know, podcasts I would kind of put in book uh, category. Some you can listen to over and over. Most mm-hmm. people listen to it once. They pick up a couple things, whatever it sticks in their brain. You listen to it while they go to sleep or on the gym or in the gym or whatever. Um, mentors are a huge one, but I think most people misunderstand mentors. You know what the best mentor in the world is? Tell me. A virtual mentor, not a physical one. Mm. Um, and I'll tell you why. Jim Rohn, you know Jim Rohn? I, he was Jim Rohn's the OG. Yeah, the like, OG. Yeah, yeah. My I, I watched Jim Rohn in, like, listen to him in the car with my kids. Yes. Always go and, back to Jim. And I, I was, you know, lucky enough to, to, you knew Jim. to be, to be his friend. It's incredible. It was amazing experience. But if I'm trying to figure out my life and Jim, you know, talked to my parents and agreed to come over to my house and give me a three hour seminar, a challenge to succeed in my life. And he gave me that seminar in my house and I took notes and I got a selfie and it was a picture. It'd be a magical experience. Most people would never be able to have that one-on-one with Jim Rohn for three hours, him doing that. That would be amazing. Could I ask him to come back tomorrow, do the same thing or in a week or in a month or ever? It's busy. Same thing. He already did it. Mm. I get it once. I bought his cassette album, The Challenge to Succeed, six six audio cassettes, three hours of content. I listened to it a thousand times. Mm. Which is more valuable? The fact that I got to sit in the room with him for three hours and I got a selfie and I had some notes or 3,000 hours of with Jim, Jim Rohn. Just you and Jim in your car at walk-in. The man. Yeah. What's, what's, what's more, more valuable? So you, we all have access to it on podcasts. We have access to it on, on YouTube. We have access to it all over the place in order to be able to, to learn and grow, mm. right? And some of your mentors, it's great to meet. And some of your mentors, it's not great to meet. Yeah. You know, they don't <laughs> quite live up to what you hope they, they would be. I've been around long enough to be part, see, see part of both. But so uh, books, learning, education, mentors, number two, and masterminds, number three. I, I just think mastermind's the biggest cheat code in the world. It is any mastermind that you can you can find your way to to get, get in into. Room. Get in the room. If you do not print money from doing that, then you are not paying attention. If you're in a room full of people who have similar situations as you and similar problems, and you are not sucking all the value out of that room, then it's on you. You're yeah. in the wrong business. You need well, to go well, do something Well, else. we were just talking about Jesse Lee, Boss Lee, right? Yeah, That's yeah. how we got That's connected. That's how you guys got connected. Right? Yeah, and and you were saying you first met her at a mastermind. She yeah, was yeah. in the room and she started meeting other people that were further along. And yep. then all of a sudden, it's like you can't unsee. Once your mind expands, you can't contract. And then we had a mentor relationship, mm. um, you know, because she connected and she's this wild, crazy, pink-haired girl. Um, I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. Yeah. But I gave her an assignment and boom, it was done. And that's what gets a mentor excited. Oh yeah, a mentee that takes action. Oh man, give him another one, give him another one, give him another one. So good. Not only did they do it, they would surpass it. And I mean, she's she's a phenomenon, an amazing soul. Um, So those three things for as far as, as cheat codes, anytime I could step into a mastermind or even a conversation like this, totally, I get a little smarter and I'm not older you know, in the process. I love that idea of being five years smarter without being five years older. That's what an event can do. Big, big decisions I just are love that. Events. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I look for those cheats all the time. Every time I can find a little cheat. Yeah. Um, talk to me about um, habits and I'm trying to look for the right word. Um, structure. Totally. Because I've, I've been, I've, I've, I'm not as structured as I'd like to be. Yeah. I get things done project by project. Yeah. You like variety. Maybe. 
or maybe I'm just rebellious. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I keep hearing from very smart people that they have structure in their lives, that they do certain things on a daily basis that are sacred. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that their brain doesn't have to think. Of, I have some people that literally wear the same clothes every day. Yeah. So like Alex Ramosi, he's an example. Yeah. Wears the same exact clothes yeah. every single day. So he doesn't have to think about it. He said, I can wear this in gym. I can wear this in restaurant. Super versatile. I can wear this on stage. Me and him talk about and this stuff that's all the time. the less, I, I don't have to think about it that It doesn't anymore. add extra value to your life having to make those decisions. And it adds to his brand a little bit too. Yeah. So whatever. So uh, whether it's workout or whatever, does that, having that structure, does that help you buy that it's, time? It's chapter eight of my book. Hmm. Yeah. There, there's two core frameworks that I teach people is the perfect week okay. and the preloaded year. Okay. Because here, here's the thing is you, you're going to wake up and you're going to work. Everybody's going to get up. They're going to do stuff. You're going to fill the time. You're going to fill the time. And Even if, if you're retired, you'll fill yeah, the time. Yeah, you're going to do something. My whole thing is about being a bit more intentional, being mm. a bit more strategic. So first off, I start with the preloaded year. I literally have this one page, um, you know, cheat sheet. If you go to buybackyourtime.com, you can download a copy. But it's, it's with the full year in one page. And every month is a little square. And I sit down with my wife at the end of the beginning, like December, and we just say, okay, what, what are we doing? We're doing the vacation again in the summertime. We're doing, we do two new countries a year. We put that in, we put the big rocks. I got my three events a year I do. I got my boys trip here in the summer and the winter. Put I got your birthdays, holidays. all of it. We put all, and we put the big rocks, the things that move the needle financially for us, the things that when, if today was our last day and we took our last breath, we, we got some of the stuff we want done. We put the big things in. And then with that, I mean, the amount of rescheduling or conflicts that people create for themselves because they don't do a little bit of planning and they accidentally say yes to something, or it's it's kind of like this. How many times have you said yes to something in the future, but then when it comes to do it, you don't want to do it? My rule is that if I wouldn't say yes tonight, it's a no, right? Talk to me about in, in buying back your time, how important is saying no? Saying no is, is, and I have a whole section on the book because anytime you say yes to something, you're indirectly saying no to something else. What, and, you, and most people are just not conscious about what those things are. So if I say yes to somebody introduces to last night, is, is a great example. I was at a party last night and a guy goes, hey, I got this opportunity. You have employees. I do this uh, employee retention credit thing. And, uh, and he goes, you have, you know, you have a thousand software companies you coach, like we could make some money. And I said, is there an opportunity for me to make 50 million with this? And he goes, no, like probably easy one or two. And I said, I appreciate the opportunity. It sounds awesome, but it's just not for me. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm building towards and I know the, the quality of things that I got to allow into my calendar. And because I know that my filter is very clear and it blew his brain a little bit. Cause he's like, it would be so e easy flex for you. Yeah. But it but wasn't even a flex. So much, I was so much like, bandwidth, but I told him, I said, what's your number? And how many times are you saying yes to stuff that you get off the call after 45 minutes go, how did I get on this call? Who is this? Why, how did, I, why did I say yes? What, the, like this is just, if you don't know where you're going, any path will get you there. Mm -hmm. And it sometimes is a zigzag. So I'm just a lot more intentional about designing the life I want to live. And it starts with a preloaded year. And then I look at what's the rhythm of the week that I mm -hmm. know that it's, to me, I'm about standards. I, I set goals that are going to happen because they're inevitable based on a standard. If I mm -hmm. want to get fit, if I want to hit a certain VO2 max and body fat and all that stuff, I don't, I don't set a goal. I say, what's the standard I'm willing to hold every day? What's the protein consumption? What's the caloric income or intake? What's the, the, the workout. And I know if I want to hit a certain target and I stay under, you know, 2,400 cows a day, 200 grams of protein, I work out for 45 minutes a day. It's not a goal. It becomes inevitable because of the standard I hold. Hmm. And I, I just try to encourage people to consider that approach to when they think about the structure in their life. And what happens is that it sounds like a lot of work up front, but then you have it stacked. One of my favorite ones recently, my buddy Sam just told me this because creatine is a great supplement. A lot yeah. of people have heard about it. Sure. It's arguably the easiest, best supplement out there, but I always forget to take it. But I never forget to take my pre-workout when I go to the gym. He said, well, put them together. So what do you mean? He goes, take the creatine, the pre-workout, the non-flavored one, and just shake it up so when you take the scoop it's both right that's a habit stack how do you how do you I'll habit stack uh here's one of mine so i i've got all my supplements i'm on all the regimen this is my pre-packed this, this is my daytime 
My assistant puts these together. This is all the stuff I'm supposed to take in my day. Uh, I have my morning that's sitting next to the sink. This is my day. And the purple one is before I go to bed. So it's, and, and it's by my bed. Yes. Otherwise I'll forget. Yes. You know, so this goes in my pocket because it's going to be ingested. It's a trigger. You have it in the place that you I have need to, to see I have it. to have it after I have some food in yeah. the middle of the day, you know, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 pills, uh, you know, to have all the stuff I'm supposed to have in order to be able to balance my body. Fit. Right. Yeah. But if I if I had those in, in eleven bottles, and you had to go and open one at a time, but that's the equivalent of Hermosis. I just wear the same thing every time. Yeah, yeah. You you, re, you create a system that is versatile and structured so that you just don't have to think about that anymore. Yeah. I don't I don't want to think about. It. I know that there's a pattern in my year that if I get the vacation with my family and I do the two countries and I do my boys trips and I do my quarterly retreats with my wife and I go and do solo trips with my kids life is life's going to win. Yeah. I like it. And, and I do the things I need to do to move my dreams forward on the business side. I, and, and, and it can be, there's variety within that, but I've designed the structure. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's that for me, the preloaded years is that. And then the, the pre, the perfect week is really saying like, if I, cause having other people support you, like an executive assistant, if you don't give them a pattern, right. If you don't have like, these are the days I shoot the podcast mm -hmm. and somebody wants to become a guest, well, then they need to talk to you based on when you feel like shooting the podcast. It's right. better to just say, look, we always shoot on Tuesdays and Thursdays or we shoot every Friday. And then as the request comes in, somebody else can just slot them in. Yeah. And it just removes thinking for things that are actually not required. And that that's I what get I'm better at that. I'm always trying to remove that stuff. And then I create the space for the creative projects. How, how, how much space do you have in your life in your week? Well, the beauty is, is with one text, I get all I want. And what does that mean? I'm, I want to take the day off. And she goes, no problem. And she makes all the phone calls, reschedules the stuff. But what, what is it real life for you though? I, I mean, don't have you white run a space. Big business. Yeah. I run multiple big businesses. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm the CEO of two eight figure companies and I'm involved in 60 plus others. Okay. And I have business partners. I don't have white space, but I don't do a meeting till 11 AM. Every day, my mornings are mine, but I don't sleep in. I wake up at four. And I, and I attack the day. I do my workouts. I, I create, I love spending the, I spend the first 90 minutes on the biggest domino that needs to happen in, in whatever, like one thing, the one thing I have one thing and I stay on it until it's, it's knocked over. I bounce, I bounce through so many things. The things I do That's in that problem. 90 minutes. I move minutes, them all forward, but I don't, yeah. I don't move them forward as efficiently as they, as I could. I think I, I use the other white space to do the little stuff. You talked about like the, the first list you have in mm -hmm. there, you called it like my, my quick, quick, yeah, and, yeah, quick and yeah. The high dopamine. I, I do those after I do the 90. Or, it's like, I got to make a call. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's like, Oh, I got to cancel thing. I got 15 minutes. I'm driving here. I'll make those. Okay. Those are on the list. But the first 90 minutes for me is I want to, I want to move a meaningful project forward. If it's writing the book, that was mm -hmm. my, my, that was a quarter right? Mm -hmm. Like of editing and like whatever. It's work. Yeah. Yeah. It's People like, people don't realize how much work a book is. It's the, it it's, could I be mean, the, we could one talk, of the hardest we could, you could things. talk for three days, probably on any top on a, a number of topics without notes, but to actually put it on, on print where it's so and final. for it to make sense and, and be logical. Yeah. And when you're editing, you change chapter 11 yeah. that you reference in chapter two and you got to fix it. It's, it's bananas. But to me, I, I have a rhythm for my day, right. And for the week. So like in the winter, Fridays are off. I go snow biking, which is this like back country thing I love doing. Um, you know, I'm supposed to be back today for date night with my wife and a couple that we we do wake surfing. A little I mean, too hot to fly. Yeah, man. My, turns out my jet engines do not take off in this heat. Yeah. My pilot's like, I've never seen anything like it. And I was like, do we need a bigger plane? He's like, not really, but I, I was going to, I was going to, I know I heard. I was going to cancel I, another charter and let you take yeah, ours. That would have been nice. It would have been easy. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, these are champagne problems, <laughs> like champagne problems, but, but again, it, it comes, it's like my, it's like my early mentor, Paul Meyer with his 44 companies, you with 60 companies that you have a piece of yeah, plus CEO of two others, two, eight figure companies, two, eight figure companies. Plus you've had exits. Do you, do you even talk about how big the exits have totaled? Um, no, because I had two of them. The first one was when I was 28, I think it was like 6 million. Which, yeah. which is a lot of 20 life changing. Yeah. And then the rest of them, they were, they were sold through NDAs, but okay. I mean, my life's good. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I fly private. What, what drives I, you now? Just the contribution side, Eric, you get it, man. Like, like yeah, yeah. there's a point where 
the 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 stuff it's funny because you have to almost get the stuff to realize it's not about the stuff mm -hmm. and then you ask yourself okay like who do i want to become mm -hmm. like and i really believe everybody's here to do two things you know i'm a person of faith i believe i was created in the you know the image of my creator mm -hmm. and at some point i'm going to meet that person and i don't want them to be a stranger and I, I call it the 10.0 version of myself. I wake up every day and I say, you know, in my best moments when I'm feeling super confident, super creative, super consistent, strong, um, generous, graceful, joyful, if I took all those best moments and put them together, that's that's the 10.0. Can I, can I do that 18 hours a day? Love to think I can, but I'm human. That's what I strive for. And then while I'm on that journey of becoming that person, like you said, I compete against me from yesterday. I'm going to share that person with the world. I have my video guy here. I put out a ton of content. I wrote the book that really cracked me open for the possibility. And I've made the decision. I'm going to just, I'm going to die empty. Love I'm it. just, I'm going to put it all out there. And I think that it, in many ways, that's kind of what we're here to do. That's mm -hmm. why we have kids, mm -hmm. right? We have kids so that we can be better for ourselves to provide better for them. But but keep going, share, share yourself with your church, your CrossFit gym, your community, your, your charitable organizations, but you got to have more so you can give more. Yeah. So that's what drives me. It's just like, I'm really curious how much more I could become so that I can actually serve more. And th that's a different skill set: communicating, being comfortable on stages, the way different you know, than software. Wait, I'm used to. I'm, I, I was happy, introverted, working, coding till two and three you know, in the morning. Like introverted guy, but I'm, I'm I'll show you photos. Situational extrovert. Yeah, right? I used to weigh 265 pounds too. Really? Like big, yeah. I just sat there and coded for, yeah. for years. Like the prototypical guy. Headphones on, neck beard. Cheetos. Yeah. Yeah, the whole deal. Yeah, and then I just got good at business, and then I realized to get better at business, I had to get good at marketing and sales teams and raising capital and turned out I really love the, um, I love to co-create. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, Eric? I feel mm -hmm. like you're the same way. It's like, I love to partner with people that are brilliant and and combine we get to do and create stuff. So I started angel investing and and that's been my happy place is just going around trying to find people that are inspiring to me and whatever they're working on, just figure out how can I support that and figure out if there's something for us to do together. And if not, like I'm I'm su such an abundance, like people are like, what if somebody steals your idea? I give it Good to luck. them. I give, I give it to them. I don't Look, care. Take the idea. Take everything. In the, yeah. I say, take every piece of secret sauce. You still have to be me. And go. You got to do it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm not worried about that. You, you mentioned John Maxwell. I just want to circle yeah. back. The law of the lid. He came to my hometown 10 years ago. And he, and this cracked me open. Especially as we talk about the book and, and fly in private. He, um, I remember my wife's had three people. She said, I want to meet in my lifetime. Justin Bieber, uh, Stevie Nicks, and John Maxwell. And I, I ended up figuring out the first two. And then one day my friend Dave called me and says, do you like John Maxwell? I said, a hundred percent. Why? He goes, we're going to, we're going to work on a project, try to get him to Moncton, New Brunswick. And I was like, I'm in. So let me know if it's money or resources or marketing help. But the only thing I asked is that my wife picks him up at the airport, blah, blah, mm. blah. Well, he lands at the FBO and I'm sitting there. My wife tells me this. I said, oh, he flew in private. Yeah, yeah, he has a a pilot and da, da 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 and I was supposed to drive him but he told me to sit in the back with him because his pilot was driving and it was and he's the nicest guy and I go that like here's a guy that came into our city he did 10,000 high school kids they brought all the high schools together he spoke there he spoke to our church he spoke to the the entrepreneurial community and I was like I want to do that and that day he gave a talk and he says you know and John Maxwell kind of folksy type you know language mm -hmm. he's like a lot of people see what I'm doing. They want to do what I do, but they're not willing to do what I've done. Hmm. And I sat there and I said, I'm, I'll do it. What is it? Four, five, 70 books. Like, I mean, it's crazy. He's done so much, but I was like, I'm willing to do that. I will do that. And it's taken me a decade to get my first book because it's, it's a lot of work. And I'm just starting. I asked, I asked him about the writing piece and he said, uh, he said, here's the secret. Just write every day. Just write that first night. Just days. write every day. Every day. If you just write every day, I don't care how long. Just Something's write every gonna, day yeah. and, and, uh, and you'll keep cranking them out. So he definitely inspired me to jump on the journey of sharing myself with the world. And it has brought opportunities like this that I would have never, ever wildest dreams. 
Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna show this because I first of all all the links where you can find this just gentleman YouTube Instagram every everywhere he is TikTok. on social yeah. TikTok the whole deal. Um, but let me just read through the table of contents for everybody. How business saved my life, then almost ruined it. How I buy back my my life, the drip matrix, the five five time assassins, the only three trades that matter, the replacement ladder, clone yourself, building playbooks, your perfect week, the only four time hacks you need, the time, uh, the test first hiring method, transformational leadership, the F word will save your business, mm -hmm. dream big, achieve bigger, preload your year, yeah. and the buy back life. Um, all of this, I would just recommend that you get this, this book. I can't wait to dive into it myself because I'm not as efficient as I need to be. Uh, network marketers are famous for being inefficient with their time. We have a very forgiving business. Other businesses are not as forgiving. Well, software is the same where you start building, it's just reoccurring. It's, you don't very have, yeah, it's not a restaurant. It, you, you, you don't do anything for the day. You just, you know, some, some people are still going to get paid. Um, it's a for, forgiving business. Anytime you can find a way to be more efficient, teach your people how to do the same thing. Mm. What is entrepreneurship designed to do? If you do it right, is to buy your time back. That's You'll be able to have more choices, have more options, have mm. more freedom. So, um, Dan, I appreciate you coming in. We'll, we'll have to do this some more. I have to have this. some more, more conversations and, uh, connect you to our audience because they need your message. Thank I you appreciate so much. you, my brother. Appreciate it. Thanks, Eric. So that's our conversation with Dan Martell. If you got value, as always, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share this with a friend. And until next time, go out there and make your life amazing.